This is the JigTech Pro. It claims that using this kit and this handle, we can fit a door handle and a latch within five minutes. That is a pretty bold claim. Let's do it. You ready, Calvin? Three, two, one, go. Oh no! <gasps> one minute. Got clog in. This is going to slow our time down. Ah! There. That's not in deep enough. Hi guys, welcome along to another edition of Build with A&E. In this episode, I'm going to be using this. This is the JigTech Pro fast fitting door handle and latch system. It claims that using this kit and this handle, we can fit a door handle and a latch within five minutes. That is a pretty bold claim and I'm really looking forward to finding out if it actually works. I've never used this system myself and this was actually donated to us by Gavin from Benchmarks Joinery. Thank you very much Gavin and all of you at Benchmarks, very much appreciated. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this unboxed, we'll have a look at what's inside. We'll also have a look inside this door furniture kit and see exactly what's in there as well. And then we'll crack on on this door over here and we'll get it fitted. So, let's open the box and have a look at what's inside. Inside the box is another box. This is a nice carry case. Okay, this is good, I like this. Nice bit of foam in there to keep everything secure. So we've got our keep marker, our latch tapper, hex key for the arbor, the jig, a 44 mm hole saw and arbor, a 25 mm hole saw and arbor, a 22 mm hole saw, and a 32 mm spade bit. So what I'm gonna do, I've got the instructions out, I've had a look and seen what's inside. I'm literally gonna go through the instructions step by step. You can learn with me exactly how to do it. I'll just show you the steps and we'll get this door handle fitted. It will probably take more than five minutes to be fair because obviously I'm gonna be reading this and talking to you. We won't take this as a fair judgment to be fair. What I might do is get this one fitted and then we'll do another one straight away without me talking and we can just time it and see exactly how quick I can do it. So first of all, it says ensure the door is hung and wedged securely. So we've got a door here. That is wedged, it's already been hung nicely as well, so we're good to go with that. Next up, measure and mark the door handle height, typically from one metre floor level. So this will vary from door to door, but in this instance what we're gonna do, on this centre rail here, we're gonna make sure that we're centre of this style, and then we're centre of this rail. So it's gonna be about there, so I'll just measure this up and we'll have a look. So we've marked up exactly where the centre of our handle is going to be, adjust the back set to suit the tubular latch specification. So the back set is a measurement from the back of the plate to the centre of the spindle where that will go through. So this one is a 57mm, so on here we've got 57mm. What you can do, you rotate this round and that will go to 45mm, so what that will obviously do when your jig goes on the door, depending on where the back set is, so how far back the latch goes in, you will adjust this to suit, and that will actually move your hole further backwards or forwards, depending on that, because it just literally moves this circle bit around. Right, we know that we've got a 57mm back set, so what I'm going to do, just flip this over, because I've marked up on this side, I'm going to get that on there. We're tight, but not over tight, we don't want to do any damage to the door. There are rubber shields on the back of this so it shouldn't do any damage. We've got a hole saw, what I'm going to do now is place this in the guide and then I'm going to drill straight through. As soon as the tip of the drill comes out the other side, I'm then going to turn around to the other side of the door and then drill back through. The reason we don't go straight the way through is because if you were to do that, when you get to the other side, as this hole saw actually goes through the other side of the door, it will end up splintering the back and it will cause what's called a blowout on the back of the door and it's going to basically do a lot of damage so you may not actually be covering that by the door handle. So it's important, just make sure the tip of the drill comes through so you know exactly where to drill back through then. So just get this in, make sure your drill is nice and level. It's worthwhile just continuously checking just to see where you're at. There we go, so I've got my hole. So now my guide drill, I can just pop that straight in there, into that hole and then return back through. There we go. Remove the core from the drill, get rid of that. Perfect diameter that you need in exactly the right place. Let's have a look and see what the next step is on the instructions. 
Okay, so we've got our 25 mil hole saw on, and now we're gonna move to the front here, and I'm gonna drill straight through this hole here. So, what I've realized is, it does actually say in the instructions to remove the reducing sleeve for jig tech latches, okay? So I'm assuming you can actually use this with normal latches as well. So it comes with this for a smaller latch. So what you need to do is just pop this little sleeve out here, this little reducer, return this to its original position. That's it, perfect. And then that way, the hole saw will fit perfectly in there. Okay, so same as before. So what you've just seen there, this got clogged up a little bit, so it might be worth just taking it back out, just checking inside the bit, just to make sure there's no debris in there. Okay, so this should just go straight through now. There we go, we're through. Just remove any excess from inside there. So now we've got our holes drilled, we need to remove this jig, just like that. It has slightly marked it, but this is an unfinished door, so it does need to be painted, so I'm not concerned about that. We need to place the keep locator in the latch bore hole. Close the door firmly in the frame, use a screwdriver in the locator hole, make an indentation in the frame for the smart keep socket. Okay, so now the locator is in the hole, what we're gonna do, we're gonna shut the door, pull it out slightly, push it tight against the door stops, and then we're gonna use a screwdriver here and we're gonna push this in, and the pin on the end of it is gonna make a mark on the door frame. Just like that, you can see we've got a little pinhole there, so that will be the location for our keeper. Okay, so step eight, we've got to use this 32mm spade bit, which is here, and using this point here where we've just made from the, uh, the latch locator, we need to drill out down to this mark. Basically, there's a, a painted mark on here, a stain mark on here, we need to drill out down to that point, and then our keeper will go in there. Okay, so I'm down to the mark, take that out, clean out any excess. Right, we should be good to go for the keeper. Let's have a look at the next step. So we need to check that the socket, which is this, this is effectively the keeper. So you've got a socket which fits in that hole that we've just drilled, and then your keeper plate goes on like that. So we need to check that this socket fits into the hole and allows one mil depth for the striking plate. Goes in the hole, and we've got our depth on there for the striking plate as well. That is beautiful, okay? So we'll take that out and see what it says next. So we've got to secure the socket in place with the screws provided. It recommends using pilot holes for hardwoods to prevent the screws from snapping. So I'm gonna get myself a little pilot drill set up, get my impact driver or a screwdriver, and we'll get this in place. So I've got my socket, I've got my screws, I'm gonna use a screwdriver as well because I've actually looked at the screws and they're quite small. So I'm gonna use a screwdriver, I'm not gonna use anything bigger. They're just a Phillips head as well, so a Phillips screwdriver, not a posi drive. Let's get this in and have a look. So there's four holes on this socket. We've got two outward holes that go there and there. They go into the lining and then you've got your keeper plate on there which lines over these other two holes which then you'll screw through to obviously keep your, your strike plate in position. So we'll get this in here, screw this in place. Okay, so the problem I've got here with this screw is that when I put it through here, because of the position of this socket, it's actually gonna bring it through the face of the lining. You can see it's just coming through here so that is a little bit of a flaw in this, but what I can do, because that's gonna be behind the architrave, I'll get this all fixed and then I can just file that down and once the architrave's on, it'll completely cover that. So we need to mark and chisel out for the striking plate. So you do actually need to use some chisels on this. So I'm gonna get this fitted on, well I'll get it offered up and then I'm gonna mark around it and then I'll get my chisels out. Just chop this out so it sits flush inside here. So I'm just gonna mark across here underneath here, okay, so then that will sit in then that keeps the stripe plate back within the perimeters of the lining. Okay, so although there was a bit of chisel work involved, that literally took me like 10 seconds. Just mark across it with your knife, just to make a nice indent in there, and then just get out with your chisel, job done. That fits nice and flush in there now, so we'll get this screwed on. Ok, 
Okay, we're all good. All right, next step. Number 13, place the spacer in the handle bore hole. Checked for correct handling. Insert the latch in the latch bore hole. Take care to insert the latch with the bolt in the vertical position using the latch tapper. Cover the latch bolt and tap the keep into the door until the face plate is flush with the door. Right. Get your latch tapper onto here. Check that it's going into your locator. There we go, beautiful. Nice and easy that was. Next step is fitting the handles. We're gonna line up these spindles with the latch and slide it through like that. And then this side is gonna go on like that. There you go, we're on. Okay, so we've pushed our two handles together. What I'm gonna do is just take this plate off and then we need to use these screws then to go through these locator holes here and that will put everything in nice and tight. So the handles are nice and securely fitted. Now we're gonna do is put this face plate back on. There's a little grub screw underneath. Yeah, so make sure that's at the bottom of the handle because you don't want it at the top so you can see it. Just gonna carefully put this on here. There is a little locator lug underneath as well. So when you tighten the grip screw, that will pinch into that hole there. And keep everything nice and tight. That's it, the handle's on. So all we need to do now is just check that it closes. There we go, beautiful. So if there is a little bit of a rattle on the door, what you'll need to do inside here, there's two little pieces on there and what you do is just bend those to suit and then that will keep the door nice and snug. I'm just going to bend that around a little bit. Okay, and then I'll shut the door. There we go. Door's nice and snug, there's no rattling, so if you've got any breeze coming through the house, the doors aren't going to be rattling. Bang on. Right, so, like I've said before, we did that one, it obviously took longer than five minutes because I'm explaining as a go, I was also learning with it, so that was my first go. This one is now my second go, so I'm gonna get this, give it a go, basically, and see if I can do it in five minutes. All my stuff's ready, laid out, in arm's reach. Let's do it, you ready, Calvin? Three, two, one, go. Boom, we're done. What's the time? Nine minutes, 35 seconds. So it was slower than the, uh, the five minutes, but I think that's still very quick, so I'm impressed with that, it is good. In an overview then, it's a great kit, it's comprehensive, everything's there that you need. The only downside I can see with this kit is when you put this socket in, like I mentioned before, the screw, depending on obviously the thickness of your door, but with this size door, the screw does actually come out through the lining. So it's not the end of the world, you can file it down and the actuator will cover it. But obviously that is a little bit of a down point. But apart from that, everything else seems perfect. I'm really happy with this. Thanks again to Gavin from Benchmarks Joinery. Cheers for this, something we're definitely using in the future. So as usual, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. You've been watching me, John from Build with A&E. Until next time, stay safe.